All right, what is going on, Notre Dame fans? I'm Tyler Horka, that's Jack Sobel, and we are here outside of TCU Field, formerly known as School Field. Downtown South Bend is where the Fighting Irish practice today for the 12th time? 13th? That sounds right. Well, we're up, we're we're up around <laughs> we're up around 12 <laughs> or 13 times that Notre Dame has practiced in fall camp. We were privy to watching the entire thing today from wire to wire, so about two hours they were on the practice field. Saw some competitive stuff early. That was pretty cool. The uh, Going back to last Saturday, I know we talked about on here and wrote about extensively at blueandgold.com. They kind of started the practice off with some one-on-one, -on -one, some competitive stuff. Did that again today. Um, it feels like that was so long ago at this point, but I think they ran two reps. Rico Flores Jr. Um, against Jaden Mickey, which has kind of been – um, yep. a go-to rivalry in this fall camp, if you want to call it that. Those guys have had some some juices flaring. Sam Harmon overthrew Rico Flores Jr. on that play. Uh, on the Looks second, like pretty good coverage from Mickey as well. Yeah, he, Mickey. Mickey locked him up. Um, the second one, I think Steve Angeli threw. At, it was either Sam Harmon or Steve Angeli. I'm going to have to go back and, and check my notes to see who actually threw the pass. But the bottom line was it was a perfect pass. Matt Salerno caught an awesome touchdown over, do you remember the defensive so back? Christian Gray, but more on him later because he had a great day. Yes, and, and that's a, kind of another theme of this practice was you win some, you lose some because these guys were going head-to-head, -head, competitive, 7-on-7, seven seven, a lot of 11-on-11 11 11 from what we saw. We'll start right there, Jack, with the juicy stuff. Um, kind of the last hour from what we saw was 11-on-11, 11-on-11, 11-on-11. The Notre Dame defense absolutely dominated the Notre Dame offense. How'd they do it? Who, who'd you see standing out? It was really up front. It was the defensive line. I'll answer the question and let him yeah. talk about it. Yeah, uh, it, it was it was defensive line. It was uh, the linebackers for the most part. It was the secondary. The shorter list would be who didn't stand out for the Notre Dame yeah. defense because it was a phenomenal performance on their part. Up front, I... The top four defensive tackles, I, I shouted out Rally Mills and Gabe Rubio, uh, Gabriel Rubio in my tweet right after practice, but Jason Anya and Howard Cross had a couple great plays as well. I, Josh Burnham at, at Viper I thought was outstanding, especially towards the end of practice against the second team I, offensive line when the first team was, was kind of done. Jordan Botello had a sack. Yeah. Bubakar Traore had, had, was... Bubakar had a couple plays in a row that made us go, oh my God, he had a long arm against Tosh Baker. I, and then the next play just... Blew by Baker uh, on the outside. Phenomenal day for the defensive line. We'll get to the other two levels shortly. Uh, just one more note on all of that, though. It, again, we we just saw so much. I wish I had my notepad literally right out in front of me so I could read it all. Um, who was just going right by Tai Chan repeatedly? Yeah. Uh, do you remember who that it, was? That was Bubakar. It was Bubakar, Trior. Just Tai Chan, uh, I mean, the offensive line, it felt like, I don't know if they were set up to fail, but... They just weren't doing their job. I don't know what it was. It wasn't a great night for the offensive line, but I think that it had more to do with what the defense was doing. Yeah. Fired up, making plays, uh, and it kind of snowballs. Once you get a practice that seems like it's going to have a particular theme, it can keep going that way in a hurry. Anybody who's played sports out there knows, like, uh, there's a lot of back and forth within given practices, sure, and, and I'll talk about some offensive plays in a minute, but it felt like, and I'll let you attest to this, once the defense started making plays, it was like, okay, that's what this is going to be tonight. Yeah, no, they were, they were making a ton of plays all, all throughout the defense, uh, just kind of moving in, into the secondary with, with a couple standouts. Christian Gray was terrific all, all practice. The freshman corner has really separated himself on the depth chart. The, the top five uh, outside cornerbacks are clearly Benjamin Morrison, uh, Cam Hart, Jaden Mickey, Clarence Lewis, and Christian Gray. Uh, and there's a gap between Gray and, and the Ryan Barnes, Chance Tucker, who's, who's, who's still in the pit injured. Uh, a couple injury updates coming soon, by yep, the way. Yep. And, uh, and Micah Bell, the freshman, who, uh, who had a, a bit of a rough day, but I, I, think, I think he's been having a good camp overall. Yeah, the, the, the secondary, secondary was great. Xavier Watts had a couple great plays in run defense. And at, the secondary just wasn't allowing a lot of open receivers downfield, and they were tackling the open receivers that were that were underneath. It was just a great, great day for them. Did we talk about Ramon Henderson yet? No. Be I, uh, yeah. I, I want to say something real quickly on him, and then you tell me what you saw from him. Uh, Sam Hartman, we haven't mentioned him yet, didn't have his best day. I wouldn't say it was particularly terrible, but he kept trying the downfield throw to Jaden Thomas, Jaden Thomas. He tried one to Tobias Merriweather, and really it was the kind of same boundary go route Dude goes deep along the right sideline, gets into the end zone. Hartman puts it up for him, and they were pretty good balls. 
but the secondary was just draped all over these wide receivers. He tried a deep ball to the left side to Matt Salerno, who kind of, I mentioned him earlier, started off the practice on a good note for the offense. I thought he was going to give those guys some juice and some good vibes. He's kind of breaking down the middle of the field on the left side, and I believe it's Ramon Henderson and uh, somebody else, Gray, Gray, Christian Gray, the, the, the corner in coverage, just all over lockstep, step for step with Matt Salerno. Hartman tries it anyway. Ramon Henderson with the pick. I saw him step up in some run fits as well and fill some gaps. He, he looks like he's coming on and taking first team reps. Yeah, the, the safeties as a, as a whole, there was a lot of rotation with the first team. Yeah. DJ Brown, Ramon Henderson, Xavier Watts, and to a slightly lesser extent, but still some extent, Antonio Carter the second, yeah. were all taking first team reps First team reps at safety. They, they're they running, what's the formation again called again where they run the Aztec position? I don't know if there's if they gave a specific formation name for it, but yeah, it's the Aztec. There's three yeah. safeties on the field at the same time, basically. There, there were three safeties on the field and a lot of their third down package, yeah. packages. They run some third down packages where they had the strong side defensive end and the Viper on one side. Yep. Jalen Sneed rushing off the edge on the other side. He had one really good rush under, I think, Tosh Baker towards yep. the end of practice. Yep. Yeah, the, they were doing some creative things on defense. The three safety set, I think, is in large part stemming from the fact that they have confidence in those three safeties, maybe more than we thought at, at first. I'm going to talk about the offensive line here for a minute. It was Rocco Spindler at right guard with the first team exclusively throughout practice, and it was Pat Coogan at left guard as well. And at first, last week when we first saw this, I thought it might just be kind of an experimental thing with Joe Rudolph to say, hey, let's give these guys a week. Let's see if this is an actual true competition with Billy Shrout at left guard and with Andrew Kristoffic at right guard. I'm starting to think that this is what Rudolph likes because we've seen it for over a week now. But here's the issue. The, the guards were just getting collapsed upon by this Notre Dame defensive line. I mean, they were all over these guys. I mean, it, it got to the point where the offensive line would kind of turn around, walk back to the huddle and say, like, I don't know what the heck's going on here. So that's a note on the offensive line. Kristoffic actually uh, left early. I don't think I saw him return. Uh, limp shoulder, le left shoulder, I think it was. Didn't look great. Jabron Payne left in the first 30 minutes of practice with what looked like a tweaked left ankle. I don't think that one is going to be as serious. Um, it, it looked like he came back onto the field and didn't participate in any reps, but he was out there kind of encouraging his guys and whatnot. Somebody who didn't return to the field in any capacity, Cam Hart, what would you see? Yeah, Cam Hart, I believe Notre Dame was running one of those little pop pass, shovel pass, you know what I'm talking yep. about, where – receiver runs across the formation. Hartman, I, th I think it was, it doesn't matter though, G uh, gives him the ball. I think it was Jaden Thomas coming over. Cam Hart d made a really nice play coming up in a, in a run fit, stopping the play either behind the line of scrimmage or a yard or two in front of it. But I don't, we we weren't close enough to see exactly what happened or exactly what Hart hurt, but he was slow to get up, walked over to the medical, sent, medical tent near the far end zone of, of school field, took out, took off his shoulder pads being attended to, tended to for a while, did not come back in, into practice. So that's definitely something to monitor because Notre Dame really cannot afford to lose Cam Hart. They've got good depth, good depth behind him, at least they believe in, they do. And Mickey, who I thought also had a good practice, uh, J Clarence Lewis and, and Christian Gray. The other injury for Notre Dame, and this one honestly looked look the most concerning, Aiden Go Gobaera during, was it, was it at first in team or, or inside run, be, yep. towards the beginning of practice, Gobaera got in the backfield, had, had what looked like either a tackle for loss or a sack, I don't remember, it doesn't matter. And it just looked like he had a non-contact knee injury. He, it, it, it didn't, was a great rep, yeah, too. Yeah, great rep by, Go, by Gobera, who was, who's, was lightly injured before in, in fall camp. Had, was looking like he was having a good practice to start, but he just he just came up awkwardly on, on that knee. I, I forget which, which knee it was, but he, he just came up awkwardly, was holding it, had to be helped, helped off the field. Looked like it was a non-contact injury. We obviously don't want to speculate, but not, it did not look good. Did not look good at all. Uh, can't end this video, which which we're wrapping up here, without mentioning at least a couple good offensive plays. Uh, Sam Hartman ran a little uh, Aaron Rodgers esque bootleg where he kind of you know did the little fake. What would you call it? It's earlier? The guitar fake. The guitar that fake has haunted me for years. <laughs> Chicago Bear, Bears fans know what we're talking about. Obviously, Green Bay Packers fans do too. But uh, yeah, just kind of hit the ball, rolled out to the uh, left sideline, found Mitchell Evans for a touchdown. And then Devin Ford caught a touchdown uh, on a little screen pass where it looks like Notre Dame did some crossing stuff and got the formation and everything going to the left. Ford leaks out to the right. Uh, quarterback hits hits him with the pass. 
Jalen Sneed was on a little bit of an island out there, and uh, Devin Ford's an agile guy, man. The Penn State uh, running back transfer can, can make some moves. All he needed to do was make one move, and he was getting into the end zone on that play. Before we wrap up here, any other offensive, defensive plays? I know we mentioned the interception. Anything just kind of stick out? Yeah, just touching a little bit at the beginning of practice, they had running backs versus linebackers one-on-one -on -one in coverage. The running backs won the drill in large part. Audric Estime, who we who we believe just had a day off in team. Yeah, he didn't participate in any of the team periods. Important to note. Uh, Estime had a couple great reps against, I think at first it was J.D. Bertrand. Uh, Bertrand and Kaiser uh, were not covering too well in that drill. Maris Leofow, though, had a one-handed one interception, which I thought was good. And we, we really can't end this, end, this, end this video, by the way. This is a great way to end it. Skip Vallada yep. had a I great know. practice. If you weren't going to say it, I would. <laughs> No, you, you 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 can you can go ahead. Yeah, Skip, Skip, Skip Vallada. Uh, you could tell the guy. It's a walk-on running back. The guys loved this guy. Every time he made a play, which he made a bunch, especially early on in those kind of three-on-threes, four-on-fours, whatever you want to call, it. even some one-on-ones too, like you were mentioning. That's where Leafell had the pick. Dude, dude gets open. Dude catches the football. He's got a nice uh, set of hands on him. Physical guy as well. They ran him a little bit in the team period. I think he uh, had a pretty long run up the middle, and, and everyone was screaming, skip, skip. So, uh, yeah, they love that guy. I, I wish I could end it on that, but I don't know if I mentioned Jadarian Price. We did mention Audric Estime. When he was out and he was not taking any of those team reps, we saw him on the field, never left the field, helmet was off, just kind of walking around. Again, you put it as a night off. Sometimes when you're Audric Estime and you're carrying the load for this team, you need one. In his absence, though, Jadarian Price was taking most of those first team reps. Devin Ford taking a lot of those as well. So when Jabron Payne goes out and then Jeremiah Love, it looked like he was working through something a little bit as well. Jadarian Price has become the revelation of this fall camp to me, just the fact that he's back 13 months after that Achilles injury and in a pinch, he can give you number one reps at the running back position. So I think we covered qu quite a bit there. There was, from, there was a lot to see. From offense to defense. Again, we watched two hours of Notre Dame practice today. We're going to write about two hours of Notre Dame practice at blueandgold.com late tonight, all day tomorrow, which will be Wednesday. If you're watching this Wednesday morning, then keep checking blueandgold.com. There's going to be a ton of content there for you. But until next time, later in the week, we get to watch a little bit of practice Thursday and Friday as well. I'm Tyler Horka, that's Jack Sobel, and make sure again to check blueandgold.com.